What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bill Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bron Bafflestone. So today we're having another episode of my Deep Dive series. Today looking at the top 10 second level spells in 5th edition. So this is a first for me. I've never done a top 10 list before. And the reason that I decided to start with second level spells and not say first level spells, which might make more sense, is simply that I came across another producer's top 10 second level spell list. And I was all, really? And so I decided to look at other people's top 10 lists and I continued to be all like, really? So I just started talking about it with the boys in my Patreon and we started working on our own top 10 list and I decided to make a video about it. And I will say this is a good time to call out and thank the boys in my Patreon. They go a long way towards the excellence of this channel. They always provide new ideas, new takes, new angles, new ways of looking at things, different rules interactions, and just incredibly valuable. Uh, I appreciate these guys so much. Uh, much love, guys. Thanks again. Uh, in any case, we put together this top 10 second level spell list for you guys, so without further ado, let's jump in and see what we came up with and whether you agree. So as per usual, we're going to do this starting with number 10 and work our way down to number one. And along the way, we'll go over some honorable mentions as well. Some spells that are great, but didn't quite make the cut. Starting at number 10, we have Lesser Restoration. Lesser Restoration is not a flashy spell. It's not a spell that you're going to be using every day, but when you need it, you really need it because there is virtually no other way to remove these several debilitating conditions. If you're blinded, deafened, poisoned, or paralyzed, you are going to need some lesser restoration. It's also cheaply twinned with meta magic, and in my opinion is a no-brainer for almost any build that has it available. It is situational, so you might want to put it on scrolls. That makes a lot of sense to me. Second level scrolls aren't too expensive. But even so, Lesser Restoration is a spell that you're always going to want to have available in any party. Coming in at number 9, we have Tasha's Mind Whip. Tasha's Mind Whip is an elite, single target, no concentration blast that offers a decent debuff and decent damage that is save for half. It hits the Intelligent save, which is the very best one. It has the fewest creatures with a strong save, and there's a ton of creatures out there with a terrible Intelligent save. Even better, low intelligence enemies are often obviously discernible. For example, beasts or elementals, basically stuff that wanders around grunting without a language and is taking orders from other bad guys is a great target for an intelligence-based save. It has an excellent upcast effect in that it gets more targets, and it ages pretty well. It's useful even in higher tiers when many second level spells become non-viable you can still use your second level slots for Tasha's Mind Whip and you're still going to have an impact on the battle. Tasha's Mind Whip is cheaply twinned with metamagic and it's eligible for the Enchanter ability Split Enchantment, which makes it very nice for enchanters. Tasha's Mind Whip does require sight, but it's still strong enough to make my top nine. Coming in at number eight, we have Rope Trick. And see my deep dive video on Rope Trick for a deeper analysis. But Rope Trick is basically an elite defensive panic button option, both in and out of combat. Out of combat, you can gain a short rest, even in an active dungeon. It's covert, so you can hide from enemies and not attract their attention, unlike Tiny Hut, which does offer a similar benefit, but it's highly visible and you can often face an ambush or some such by coming out of it in a crowded environment. Or you might just attract the attention of something that has Dispel Magic and then you're screwed and Rope Trick defeats environmental hazards that might otherwise prevent a short rest. At higher levels, I've often seen oppressive auras and such that make it difficult to conduct a short rest, and after conducting a short rest in those conditions, you often have to make a save of some kind against some kind of nasty condition or debuff, and Rope Trick will take those off the table. In combat, it can create total cover with no openings to be worked around at will, with an action, that is crazy good. The only way to affect people inside of the rope trick is to actually climb the rope, and you can raise and lower the rope in the same round if you use your own and an ally's interact with objects. And by ally, I mean like a summon or a helper, 
like a familiar or homunculus, and you can use a five foot rope to prevent it from being unwieldy. It doesn't have to be 50 feet. Now it has a one hour duration, so it can be precast with no loss to action economy if you're setting up an ambush or if you know the site of a future battle. And you can offload it to a familiar or pet with a spell rot tattoo and get some excellent action economy out of an in-combat rope trick. It can also act as a mass invisibility option. Even though it's a little clunky and only situationally viable, it is possible in some cases. And rope trick is no concentration, which is crazy good for such a powerful combat defense. That makes it ideal for protecting your concentration on more critical spells. For example, Conjure Elemental, is a spell where it's quite hazardous to lose your concentration since the summon turns hostile to you. You might want to protect your concentration in that case. Rope Trick also ages very well. It has equally strong impact in Tier 4 as it does in Tier 1, and it is an easy way to get off plane for spell shenanigans. For example, plane shifting to a new location in the Prime Material Plane, and now you've turned plane shift into a quasi-teleport. You don't need sight to pull off a rope trick, which I always appreciate, so I just love rope trick. Now it does come with a downside. It is very clearly too powerful for a lot of DMs to not nerf it, or they'll shame you for using it, and in fact so will other players. I mean, I have found that it's so powerful that even players that have access to it will often self-police usage because they're trying not to be cheesy. And this spell is so powerful that even just using it as written is considered cheesy by a lot of people. That's a good spell. Rope Trick comes in in our top eight. At number seven, we have Suggestion. Suggestion is a highly versatile option that is excellent in both the combat and the interaction phases. And you can do situational triggers, which really rewards creative commands and role playing. It's basically what we want out of Charm Person, but don't get, right? It forces behavior and actions without having to make an interaction skill roll, and the target doesn't realize they were charmed afterwards. It has an 8 hour duration, which is elite. In fact, it's borderline ridiculous for a second level spell to be able to control someone for that long. It's cheaply twinned with meta magic. Again, it's eligible for the enchanter ability split enchantment, so enchanters do very well with second level spells in 5th edition. And I will say that it's save and nothing, and I don't tend to like save and nothing effects, but I still find it acceptable to be in the top 10 due to the save or die impact of sticking it. It's not just save or suck a little bit, it's basically save or you are out of the combat. So that is strong enough for me to be willing to risk the variability. And furthermore, it does require concentration and it does require sight, and those tend to be downsides for me, but nonetheless, suggestion is still good enough to make my top seven. Coming in at number six, we have Summon Beast. The Tasha summons are extremely powerful, and to get one at level three is exceptionally good. Now it does age poorly. It's going to be very soon replaced by better summons, the third level summons, but it makes a huge impact at levels three, four, and even five when you take into account multi-classing. It just makes a huge impact at those levels. Summon Beast offers a solid damage output and a fantastic meat shield. Both its offense and durability are similar to a tier 1 PC, and it's in the form of a disposable summon. Plus it has a 1 hour duration, which allows for aggressive precasting and very strong action economy. It is such a benefit to be able to throw your summon out there, ready to go when initiative is rolled sending it out front of the party to draw out ambushes and attacks, and you can deploy it in multiple environments because it offers multiple movement options, right? You can get fly speed, you can get a swim speed. Every time I've seen Summon Beast cast, I have breathed a sigh of relief because I know that that is a huge swing to the battle in our favor. Summon Beast does require concentration and sight, but you only need sight to place it so regardless of these weaknesses, I consider Summon Beast to still be good enough to make my top six. And then coming in at number five, we have Vortex Warp. This new spell has been nothing but impressive to me in the several times I've seen it deployed since it came out. The ability to reposition allies is amazing for offense, for defense, for utility. You can even get people out of force cages without having to go through a charisma save. And then of course you have the ability to target enemies. 
and this can be extremely powerful, both in affecting dog piles by calling an enemy into a group of allies who all focus fire their attacks on that target, or when reducing pressure on your front line. If you're just getting overwhelmed, you can take the pressure off and send that bad boy 90 feet away. It's especially good when combined with area of effect controls or damage, throwing a target into a force cage or into a wall of fire or into a blade barrier is always fun and no size limit on the target is tasty. It also has a great 90 foot range. You can upcast it for more range. You can cheaply twin this bad boy with metamagic. It ages very well with a strong impact even in tier four. And while it does hit the con save, which is not ideal, and it does require sight, which is not ideal, Vortex Warp is still strong enough to make my top five. Coming in at number four, we have Aid. And Aid is a spell that I really love. I almost expect it. And it is a surprising omission to me from other people's top 10 second level spell lists. Aid is a no concentration, pre-damage healing option, quote unquote, that is always gold. In practice, it functions like a quasi death ward. It will stack with temporary HP and other means of raising your HP max. You can target three creatures and therefore bring up three unconscious allies with a single cast. You don't need sight to deploy aid. It has a fantastic eight hour duration, which makes it eligible for rest tricking and see my deep dive on rest tricking for more info about how all that works. And it upcasts very well especially when you're rest tricking with your highest available slots. That makes it a great option for multi-class builds that often have an empty highest level spell slot. But otherwise, casting it at fourth level seems to be the sweet spot to me in terms of the cost benefit ratio. You get an extra 15 hit points to three party members before they take any damage. In practice, that is simply fantastic and makes a huge difference to the survivability of your party. As such, aid ages very well, with a strong impact even in tier 4. I mean, I just did a level 21 shot, and I assure you every single one of us had an aid cast on them. It really is that good. Now, I will say that I think that the impact can be hard to notice, because you don't cast it in the moment, it's pre-cast, and players will often miss that they would otherwise be dead if they hadn't had their hit point max bumped up through aid. But I tend to notice that quite frequently. It's something that I look for, and I have noticed it making the difference many, many times, not just for myself, but for my allies. Aid is an absolutely fantastic spell. I have no problem with it being in the top four. Coming in at number three, we have Web. Web is just an incredible control spell that ages very well, because restrainment is always debilitating. It has a cube AoE that can affect flyers, Right, you can block choke points from floor to ceiling so flyers can't squeeze through. And it can take down flying enemies, albeit by sacrificing further duration. The web will collapse in one round if it's not anchored, but it does exist long enough to take down flying enemies by knocking them prone. Web hits the deck save, which is excellent. Low dex enemies are often obviously discernible. For example, the big and slow creatures on the field. And you don't need sight to deploy it, something that I always appreciate. Web does require concentration, and concentration is something that I give heavy negative points for, and that's why there's only three concentration spells in my top 10. But Web is one of the best spells in the game. It is still good enough to make my top three. By the way, as a note, you can't do 300 damage to a gargantuan creature by setting a web on fire, okay? There ain't no second level spells in 5th edition that do 300 damage. Get the fuck out with that stuff, please. Coming in at number two, we have Misty Step. Ah, Misty Step. I don't really have to say too much about this one, right? A bonus action teleport offers universal appeal and a very strong impact. Every single build or spell list in 5th edition would benefit by adding it. And incredibly, it can be acquired by any build through Fey Touched. And man, it is a particularly great add for marshals who don't normally get teleport options. It's a bonus action cast that only minimally degrades their damage output, and it is a low resource cost, consistently effective means of repositioning and escaping restrainment. As you get up in levels, you tend to often fight things that can grapple and restrain, especially if you're a marshal on the front line. 
having Misty Step available is gold in such scenarios. Now Misty Step does require Sight, and by casting it, it will limit Spellcaster's action cast to a cantrip, but despite these limitations, Misty Step is still a banger, and it is still strong enough to make my top two. Okay, now before we get into the number one second level spell in 5th edition, I did want to include some honorable mentions. Some great spells that didn't quite make the cut for the reasons listed, which is not to say they're not great spells. These are basically my top 11 through 20, but I'll be presenting them in alphabetical order. Starting with Dragon's Breath. A great damage spell, but it is concentration, and concentration is tough. Almost all of these spells that just missed are concentration. It requires combo pieces, which aren't that hard to put together, of course. You can always use your familiar if you have Dragon's Breath, but it'll often just get your familiar killed. And you, in a metagaming sense, risk your DM never forgetting that your familiar can be a threat and remembering to try and kill it if he gets a chance going forward. Heat Metal is very good, but again, it's concentration, it requires sight, and it's situational, as not everything has metal. Hold Person is very good, but it's concentration, it requires sight, it's a single target save and nothing spell. Very good spell, Hold Person, but it didn't quite make my top 10. There's Invisibility, which at first seemed to me to be a shoe-in for the top 10, but as I realized how many great second level spells there are out there, I had to squeeze it off. It's concentration, it is situational, it's not that great in combat. In practice, it's better for solo work than for team play, and in team play, it often is really only beneficial in terms of scouting, and scouting is often already covered by having a familiar or a summon out there or an arcane eye or some such. So invisibility did not quite make my top 10. Then we have levitate, which I love, but is also a concentration spell that requires sight and hits the con save and is safe and nothing. Then we have pass without trace, and this will be controversial, especially with my friend Pack Tactics, who loves pass without trace, but I couldn't justify including it in my top 10. It's concentration, it requires combo pieces, namely concealment, it can be a pain to play with because the stealth rules are largely ambiguous and will vary from table to table. But the main thing about it that makes me think it's overrated is that most folks forget that no stealth roll wins, even at a plus 10, if your enemies can see you. If you don't have that combo piece of some means of concealment or cover, Pass Without Trace isn't going to help you. And while it has been useful for me in my own playing career, as my Dowlock has it, being an Earth Genasi, I've often honestly felt that it shouldn't have worked when it did work for us, because they can see us. And I just didn't want to be the guy that pointed that out and ruined everybody else's fun, but rules as written, I think Pass Without Trace is a little bit overrated and not as useful as people tend to make it out to be. Then we have Phantasmal Force, which is a good spell, but it's concentration and it's an illusion. And illusions are just so variable from table to table. You really need a cooperative DM to make this work. But if you do have a cooperative DM, I do like Phantasmal Force quite a bit. It hits the int save. There's a lot of good things about it. Next honorable mention is Silence, which didn't quite make the cut as it's concentration, it's situational, and it requires combo pieces. That is, a grapple to keep them inside of the Silence, or some other means of keeping them inside of the AoE. Another honorable mention to Spike Growth, which is a good spell, but didn't make the cut as it's concentration as it only causes damage, which I consider to be inferior to Restrainment. It doesn't do anything against Flyers, and it ages pretty poorly, I think, with fairly negligible damage to creatures of higher tiers. And finally, we have Spiritual Weapon, which is a good workmanlike spell, but to me, it offers nothing but unimpressive damage. It clogs alternative bonus action attack options, or even non-attack options. And it just strikes me as a built-in extra attack option for the cleric progression that uses a resource instead of just being always on. So I like Spiritual Weapon, but I couldn't justify putting it in the top 10. So all right, we have finally gotten to the number one most powerful second level spell in 5th edition, and it is a tie between Shield and Bless. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I couldn't resist putting that in there. Shield and Bless are practically overpowered for first level spells. You might even consider Silvery Barbs in that category now. But all three of those are an excellent deployment of your second level slot. 
So I did feel compelled to mention that. But no, really at number one, we have Find Steed. Find Steed is so good. It's a permanent, no concentration summon that's going to do extra damage and provide meat shielding for you, and it's only a second level spell. It's a renewable mount, so you are going to have a consistent maneuverability advantage. And the consistency of having a mount present makes Mounted Combatant a fantastic offensive feat option where you get a lot of your attacks at advantage. It offers a one mile range telepathic bond between the caster and the mount, which is sneaky useful. And of course, it automatically twins self-targeted spells. That is borderline insane. That is so good. If you get hasted, your steed gets hasted too. If you get blurred, your steed gets blurred too. Mirror image, your steed has mirror images. You aid, your steed has extra hit points. Death ward, your steed has a death ward. Dragon's breath and your steed has Dragon's Breath, I mean, that is just so, so good. And that's why I consider Fied Steed to be the strongest second level spell in 5th edition. So there you have it, my top 10 second level spells in 5e. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did I get it right? What spells did I egregiously leave out? Tell me why. I'm always happy to hear and get that conversation started. Regardless, thank you so much for watching. This has been Bill Bronson Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bronson Bafflestone. See you next time.